Welcome. Today we're in the garden with Margaret Brinkhouse, a founding member of the Louisiana Gourd Society and the Louisiana Craft Guild, and Karen Willingham, who is a gourd enthusiast and a master gardener, and she's also a garden artisan, as both of these ladies are. We're going to talk to you about taking gourds from the vine to these beautiful projects that they have completed, and we're going to talk about the upcoming gourd show in New Iberia. Karen, could you tell us how you start growing gourds, the basics of gourd growing? Well, gourds have been around for a very long time, and the basics is like you would grow squash or zucchini. You just plant the seeds in a mound. You want to have about eight feet around them. You plant them in the spring. They take about 140 days to mature, depending on the size of the gourd, on how long it's going to take to dry once it's been growing. You can have them growing up on a trellis, or you can have them growing in a mound, but you want to have about eight feet if you're going to grow them on the ground. And you mentioned a trellis. You can grow them up on the trellis. I grow up, I grow the gourds on the trellis, up on sticks, you know, in order to have a lot of area and a small area because I like growing a lot of gourd and I don't have a lot of space that has a lot of full sun. You want to do full sun. But you could grow them on an arbor. I've grown them accidentally on a tree. <laughs> that worked out. That worked out well. Where do you grow your gourds? I grow them. I let some grow on the ground, some on a fence, some on a trellis or an arbor. So you can use your imagination. Oh, you wait until the ground is warm, about the time that you would plant eggplants, is what I tell people, and poke those seeds in the ground, and they're going to start growing. They're really not a hard plant to grow. No, I put about three seeds per mound or per little space. You want a couple of feet between them if you're going to grow them up. I have them growing in buckets sometimes up on a little trellis and grow little egg gourds. I think we have some pictures to show you what they look like when they start growing. I started in um, April, and then my May, they're starting to come up in the ground. Then you have male and female flowers, but in the beginning, they like squash. The first flowers that come are going to be male flowers. They're going to look different than the female flowers. The female flowers will have the picture, will show you the type of gourd that it is. You'll see that little miniature gourd on there, and you just keep watching. I, I would go out every day because the moss is what pollinates your gourds. And the moss pollinates the hard shell gourds versus the um, ornamental gourds. They're different colors. The hard shell gourds, the moths do them at night. The, the ornamental gourds, they do them during the daytime, they're the yellow flowers. Sometimes you have to help them along by taking the male flower, putting it along with the female flower, and that's how you do gourd sex. And it's really, you know, sort of like growing pumpkins, if you've ever grown pumpkins. Do you fertilize your gourds? I don't. I, I think one, people, one thing that people need to know is that they require a whole lot of water. Especially when, when the temperatures start yes. getting higher. And a, a gourd this, uh, this size will probably weigh about 25 pounds when it's green. But um, as it dries, then it gets lighter. As, as they start drying, and that's one way that you can tell that they're curing, correct? That they're, the weight's going to get lighter. Well, I, I never test them until it's, um, either the stem turns brown or the vine dies. Mm -hmm. One thing you want to do is keep the gourds on the vine until the vine is dead. Don't take your gourds and cut them off the vine ahead of time, because then they're going to rot on you. So you want to leave them until the vine is dead. Then you want to take them in for harvesting. So you won't tell how, how light they are until after you cut them away. Okay. And then you'll start telling them they start drying. Some gourds can take two weeks to dry, depending on the, how big they are. Sometimes they'll take six to, to a year to finish drying and you can start doing something with them. Now, and I noticed you leave the stems, a portion of the stems, when you cut them. Definitely, yeah. Depending on, the, some of them just fall off and some of them do. But once you have them and they're growing and they're finished and you cut them, away from the vine because the vine is dead, you'll end up with gourds that have mold on them. They're going to be green or dark green or light green and just put them in an area that has a lot of air movement around them. So that way they're going to dry and you want to sometimes tilt them and move them around so that they have good air movement all around them. And let's do tell people that this is going to happen. 
correct? This is natural for it to, to mold like this. This gourd here has been grown in Louisiana. I grew it. Mm -hmm. Miss Margaret grew this one. And if you feel it's kind of rough and, and ugly, but once you clean it away, you'll end up with a nice, clean, smooth gourd like this one. And how do you clean it? What I do is I wrap them in an old wet bath towel overnight, and then the next morning I'll take a pot scraper and just scrape all that mold off, and you set it out to dry. What's so exciting about working with them is something you may end up with mold like this, which I like, so all I did was seal it, or if you want all the mold off, then you might discover these beautiful uh, designs right under the mold. So each and every gourd is going to be a little individual, too. Exactly. You know, you, you don't know what is going to happen until it happens, really. And then you get to the wonderful process. Well, let's, let's briefly, though, talk about the varieties. I see you have some different shapes here. We have, they call it apple gourd because it's shaped like an apple. And this came over time to people cross-pollinated it to get this particular gourd. This is one of the ornamental gourds called a warty gourd because of all the little warts all over it. This is your bottle gourd. Cannonball, it looks like a round cannonball. Mm -hmm. We got a little egg. We have a long dipper. Uh, uh, this is a short dipper. Down below we have a long dipper that we had a guy that he's really good at and I'm trying to do it that you can actually, as it's growing, you go around and each day you go back and move that stem another half quarter of an inch, one fourth of an inch and use stockings to hold it in place and you eventually you can tie it in a knot. He's done some as many as three knots in them. He's done some with two of them growing that knotted themselves together. So that's some examples of, of doing different things with the gourds. And a lot of people is, okay, is there a particular variety that they use to make the little bird houses? They use the, this type uh -huh. or the Martin type. So you, ha you have a lot of choices, a lot of shapes when you become an art guard artisan to choose from. But you can even use something like this. Right. Right. Okay. Now, I, ha I know here that we have the gourd show is going to be April the 3rd through the 5th in New Iberia, and you're going to have some workshops in yes. conjunction with that. Yeah. The, um, we have artists from around the state going to be teaching. We also have some artists from other states coming in to teach. One of them is going to be teaching this particular design. Not this design, but this technique. And this is wood burning. Okay? And it's all, it's wood burn. Even the black is wood burn. So that's going to be a fun class to teach and take. Another class is going to be this one here. And it's this is an old technique that people would use when they're doing um, woodworking. And it's gouges. And you gouge out the gourd. This is called chip carving. And this is going to be, this is going to be a fun class. It's going to be a willow shape on the guy he's going to be teaching it. They didn't send us the gourds to show you, but this gives you an idea of the technique. And where can people find other information about your show? Louisiana Gourd Society. Okay. Dot org website. Ha, as a website. So for more information on the show, you can go to Louisiana Gourds, Gourds Society. Do, society dot dot org. org. Mm -hmm. Right. And get information on their show. Now, Margaret has been crafting with gourds <laughs> for 20 years. Fell in love with gourds after doing jellies. Yes. And has just become an amazing artisan. What, what's one of your favorite processes? I don't have a favorite. I just like them all. You like <laughs> them all, but we would just I, I don't. I don't like to waste anything. Mm -hmm. So the, um, I'll use the seeds for a thatched roof on the birdhouse. I also use them for uh, the earrings that I have on, angel earrings. I call them angels on my shoulder. And, um, and your pendant? Yes, yes. It's uh, a board also, scrap, yeah, actually. it is. And then um, this is a gourd top, which I wouldn't throw away. This gourd top is probably 15 years old. Then last year, I grew these little tiny gourds. These are called spinners, and uh, I don't know, they just seem to go together, so I made a turtle out of them. And I experimented this year. 
uh, the, these little gourds matured in like two months, and so I tried planting another uh, planting, mm -hmm. and I made another crop. And you made a second yes, crop. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. When they're small like this, they'll dry in a hurry, but something like this takes a whole year okay. and then another year to dry. And we did skip that process. How do you know when they're dry? The shell's going to harden. It hardens, and they're really light. When you pick them up and you hear the seeds rattle inside, then you know you can cut them open. And this is what they look like on the inside. Some of them look dirty, and there's your seeds that you can plant to grow more goods next year. Okay, now how do you have to get all these seeds out? I mean, you don't want this in here to start your craft project. A spoon. The, I find the best thing is to use for um, scooping ice cream mm -hmm. and scoop it out with an ice cream. Come back with a green um, mini uh, thing to clean the inside and scrape it away. If you wet it down, you got to be careful because the gourd can reshape itself. Uh -huh. If it's too wet and one area stays wet, it could crack it. Now, does the dust bother either one of you? I was going to say that. You have to be very careful when you're cleaning or working with gourds because the, door, the gourd dust can become toxic, and it does bother me now. I do have to wear a mask, and you should always wear a mask when you're working with them. Yeah, I definitely suit up, and you can see one of the, we have a picture of what you suiting up cleaning the gourds. I'll do a bunch of them at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just make a whole project of it. Why, why? Do you ever use sandpaper or you just actually scrape? Sandpaper on the inside, yes, but not on the outside because okay. it could scratch your area on the outside if you're not careful. Okay. I have a special tool that looks like a golf ball that has uh, like rocks on the outside and that gets a lot of the, the pulp out and then you come back with your sandpaper. Mm -hmm. And you then you always have to seal the inside too so that over a period of time, all these little uh, insects don't come out. Mm -hmm. Now, how long can you expect some of your craft projects to last? If it's inside forever, if it's, if it's not, if it's away from the sun, it's not going to. Um, it'll be fine. You know, any type of art you want to keep it away from the direct sunlight. Right, right. But gourds date back to pre prehistoric times. They found them in uh, pyramids and in caves. Uh, they used to, they were used as containers before we had any uh, dishes or um, baskets or anything to uh, transport the, the goods. They used them for milk and, um, and water, and then they used them as bowls to put their ducks in when they, after they kill them. And to, you know, if they were going to move from one island to another, then they had to protect them from the... Uh, Critters. And there's even speculations that the seeds floated across islands, correct? Mm -hmm. Across oceans. Yes. In, in the early histories of the world. This looks like an interesting little project. That's my okay. first gourd purse. I don't like wearing, carrying purses, so I just kind of hook it on and I'm on my way. And it opens up, and inside the, the middle is where I would put all my stuff for my purse. Unique. And how did you get the coloration? Well, over time this one's faded a little bit, but I've used three different techniques to get this particular color. Because one didn't work, so I tried another and then another one. Um, a lot of people use gourd. Over time, there's new products come out mm -hmm. made just for gourds, but it's just taking other products and, and, and using for gourds and stuff. Um, it's shoe polish. Some people use leather dye, mm -hmm. but in Louisiana, because of our moisture, leather dye in time will seep through the pores inside the gourd, and you won't see those colors any longer. I said, what do you they use, think, Margaret? I use leather dyes, and uh, Welburn gourds out of California have come out with different dyes that are not fade, uh, mm -hmm. they're fade resistant. This one I use just um, brown shoe polish on, the paste kind. And, and, what, and it just brings out the sheen. It, it's so pretty. And, and then if you wanted to seal it, what would you use to? Use a spray sealer like a spray varnish. Okay. <clears throat> you can either use a matte or, uh, or a gloss or a semi-gloss. And this gourd was from Hawaii? This, uh, yes, and I don't know how to pronounce what the technique that they call it, but you pick this. We had said earlier that you can't pick a gourd from the vine until the vine dies or the stem turns brown. After the stem turns brown, this was picked and they lightly scraped off the design that, that they wanted and then it was filled with coffee 
grounds and water and thrown out every every week, you know, exchanged. And I think it took about six months for uh, for this to happen. The the um, coffee grounds will just die this part that was not scraped off, and this just stays natural. And then it was trimmed. Yeah, that uh, it looks like they used uh, seagrass on here and beads. I like using different unusual things. I use philodendron uh, from the philodendron plant. I use horsehair. I use pine needles, which I dye myself. And just anything out in nature that I come across. Um, we can use walnuts. I, I don't have anything here that, that I did. Now with. this looks like it required a little bit more work. <laughs> That one took me many hours to do that. I'll do a little bit of time. It's all wood burned into it, all freehand. And I call it a zen, a zen gourd. What other tools do you two ladies use on, on your gourd work? A Dremel for, cu for cutting away things. I use a gourd saw. I use a, um, a little miniature um, sander mm -hmm. if I need to. I would imagine different people choose different tools. Yeah, X-Acto knife is one I use a lot. A lot. And wood burners that have controlled temperatures do best. You can take pieces of gourds and make little things like this. This is a boat. With some of the little miniature gourds. Little too. gourds that we grew. That, that boat represents gourding on the bayou, which is uh, the theme of our show in April. Wonderful. That is uh, carving. Uh, it's, it's more like stippling and wood burning. Okay, so you actually gouged? Yes. Yeah, all the white stuff you see is it's missing pieces it's of gourd. It's missing yeah. pieces and, mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the stain. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Gilda's piece that I used on, on the harem itself. Beautiful. You can make instruments out of gourds. Oh, yeah. This is called a thunder drum. And what, what is the parchment on the bottom? I don't know what it's called. They just call it a membrane. And you have to use this particular size um, spring. spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the larger ones won't Of course, give there's, that there's instructions, but this yeah. is just <laughs> unique. The crew loves this. This is voted by the crew as one of the favorites. And then we have the uh, ocean drum also. Okay. Why don't you talk about this? Oh, all right. This was, uh, this weaving was done with seagrass. It's hard on, hard, very hard on the fingers, but it's a lot of fun to do. And um, this is also weaving a basket on top of a gourd. And I just used um, seagrass and yarn and uh, philodendron sheath and uh, jacaranda pod. Oh, I'm giving this, I'm giving this secret away. But you did it so well. <laughs> Do well, it again. I wasn't trying to do it. Same as in the ocean. I was supposed to. And it too has a. Now this has a, a goat skin. Okay, it. as as a drum, and this and is a large drum. Yeah, and you, can, you can even actually do drumming. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was the crew's second favorite. <laughs> oh, I want you to talk about my purse too. Mm -hmm. uh, this purse is made from a, a canteen gourd, and I found some look like gold dust, and so I, I applied it to the uh, paint and then painted the inside. And I do what is called kumihimo braiding and I made the, the purse strap. It's a Japanese braiding. 
takes a long time to do, but it's a lot of fun. I can't sit and do nothing. I have to be busy. Now, can you can you act, can you work on your gourds while you watch television, or do I you have to be? I don't watch do television. Do you have to be? <laughs> you know, really concentrating on it, depending on what you, you're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I'll you could, read watching TV. And you could be cleaning, mm. for, sure, for sure. No, no you want to do that? No, outside. the sink or outside. No, okay. Best thing, because you don't want to have that inside and have the mole inside, because it could affect somebody else that you don't, that's in your household. True. That's true. Now, this is a... That's a, uh, it's either a bottle gourd. It, it could have, could be a snake gourd that I just cut part of, part of it off. And unique little seeds. No, these are beads. Okay, those are beads. And this is another gourd that's put on the inside, and another, another yeah. piece on the bottom for the for the base of it. Just a little more abstract gourd. Mm -hmm. That's a gourd doll. We have another small little gourd doll down there. Yeah, that's made from, um, this is called a banana gourd, and then this was um, a spinner, and I had this big acorn cap that I uh, put on as a, for a hat. Oh. Now we're going to be giving away door prizes at our show, and they're going to be the little gourd dolls. I'll, we have the box. So if you come to the show on the two days, we'll be giving away door prizes. Oh, how wonderful! Now this is called just tapestry uh, weaving. I cut out the shape of uh, the state of Louisiana and did the the weaving inside, and then I used the uh, dyed pine needles for for the rim. And this one didn't sit straight. Sometimes. Um, they won't sit straight, so you have to put them on a on a stand. And that one took first place last year at our gourd show for weaving. Mm -hmm. We do have a, um, a contest, or you know, that people bring their gourds and can, against other people's gourds in the same field, and they get judged. Now, do you have monthly meetings? They're quarterly. Quarterly. Uh, yes. Well, there's a gourd patch in different areas. One of the gourd patches is called the. Um, Cajun gourd patch mm -hmm. that we meet um, in Orneville or Sunset or around Lafayette area. We meet quarterly. We'll meet one again in May. And that's all on your website? On the website. Okay. These are a couple little pins that you can make with pieces of called char chars of gourd. Gourd char. I'm saying Shards. Right. Gourd chars. Thank you. <laughs> so you can do all kinds of things with pieces. So if, if a gourd breaks, don't throw them away. You can find uses for them. Yes, as Miss Margaret said, you know, she utilizes every little piece of these gourds. Oh, oh, utilizing these, I use the pulp from the inside, too, to make handmade paper. And you I, are I, I creative. Didn't bring, I didn't bring a, a, a sample of that today. But I was determined to learn how to do embroidery on a gourd. And it took me 35 hours to do this. <sighs> And I had to drill 700 holes. Oh, my gracious. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I was satisfied when I finished it's with it. It's beautiful. It's worthy of a prize, yeah. too. Yeah. This is another small gourd that you can Ow. just do. Just use your imagination, and you can come up with anything. I met an artist, uh, Denise Myers from California, who sold a gourd for $20,000. And we asked her, why would anyone spend $20,000 on a gourd? She, what she does is she, um, she puts, I can't think of what it's called, inlays diamonds and precious uh, stones. And when we asked her, why would anybody spend $20,000 on a gourd? And she said, well, if you have a lot of money, you want something different that no one else has. So. And then tell us about this beautiful gourd. This is our traveling gourd that we we're raffling for uh, to raise money to put on our show in April. Seven seven different artists did work on it. Karen did this part. She did the um, violets. I did the dogwood and the um, water lily, and then other artists from throughout the state did uh, different sections on it. And you're going to be able to buy raffle tickets at the Gourd Show, which is April 3rd through the 5th in oh, New Iberia. They can even get them online now by going to uh, the uh, LouisianaGourdSociety.org site. Is, it is just beautiful. You can't, you know, you can't appreciate being away from it, the uniqueness of this piece. It would be 
wonderful in anyone's home. The theme on this is wallflowers of Louisiana. Col mm -hmm. Colorful and beautiful. We have enjoyed having you ladies here. I know everyone is going to just look forward to your show. We also have some upcoming gardening events. Do not forget that the Festival The Floor is coming up in April the 12th and the 13th. We will have a plant swap on April the 19th at our demo garden. So start your poor pitiful <laughs> little plants, any that you have left to bring to the swap. The second Saturday Garden Talk has a new location at Green Tea Linden Elementary School. And the topic of this Saturday is planting tips for the home gardener. Oh, we got to go forward. <laughs> she was cutting in on camera. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you